Good afternoon, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. Uh, what date is it today? It's the 20th of October. I've just had a birthday. 32. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. I'm just turning the light off in the workshop. Because I'm done today. The time is 8 minutes past 7. And uh, I've been busy. I've been busy fixing stuff and that kind of thing again. So, this afternoon, I brewed beer today as well. But thankfully Gemma is now basically the head brewer. So she looks after everything while I'm running around fixing all the other bits and bobs that uh, that I do, you know. So yeah, today I've been in the cellar and I've cleaned all the keg couplers for the keg lines and I've trimmed back the pipe work. Have I got a little bit of pipe on here for you? Yeah, so you know that we installed all the pipes, connectors and whatnot a few years ago. Well, I've taken the ends off them all and just trimmed back 10 mil to a nice piece of plastic again to counteract any gas leaks or beer leaks. So I'll turn that light off in there. And then um, you'll notice Martin's mash tun uh, running out of grain. These are empty grain sacks and the reason they're kicked around all over the place is because I've had to take, you know, the new chiller that we had sat there, which was running couple of the cold rooms well thankfully it's cold enough in here today that I can turn those cellar conditioning cold rooms off I've had to pinch that let me turn the camera around and I'll show you why so that's come away from there and we've had to take it up to the top so I brewed beer today went without a hitch and I'm planning on brewing tomorrow and Saturday to fill up FV7 and FV8 so these three fermenters six seven and eight run from a hacked AC unit of which I put the evaporator block into a tank of glycol and created my own cooler. I did this way back in 2014. Here it is and it's still, well, this is the caveat. Up until today, <laughs> it was still working. And today it's finally crapped out. In fact, I should probably unplug it if I can get my... Oh, I'll do that when I put the camera down. Jesus Christ. So, yes, I've pulled up um, hydrocarbon cooler, R290. R290, that could be a name for it. It's like R2D2. So the R290, for those of you who don't know, it's um, propane. So these... Uh, these new hydrocarbon coolers use propane as their refrigerant because they are considerably less damaging to the environment if you have cut the pipe and the gas escapes. But of course they do come with a fire hazard if you are working on them. Not that most people will be because to do that in the UK you need an F gas certificate. Unless you're working on a mobile unit, so car aircon units and things like that, you can. And guess what? This is on wheels. So I can effectively work on this if I want to. But I shouldn't have to because it is brand new after all. It's only a year or so old. And thankfully when I bought this, I ordered a couple of spare heat dumps that go outside. I've never had much luck with buying second hand ones from eBay because they're always knackered bunged up leaky dodgy electrics whatever you like buy a brand new heat dump it's only twice the price of a second hand one and you know it's going to work so fortunately i bought a couple of those which means all i had to do when this crapped out this original one crapped out let me zoom out a little bit so you can see what i see in fact i've got a light here this might help there we go, so we're in this little grotty corner of the brewery. So when it crapped out, all I had to do was cut the two feed pipes, so the glycol supply and glycol return, and hook them across onto the flow jet pump. And then I've just got, as you can see, a heat dump there. I've just sat it on the side for today, because obviously we're going to have to move all this stuff around tomorrow. I'll probably pull this old one out. But you know what? It's doing the job. It's already down at 5.9 and that's cooling the fermenter as well so it seems to have worked 
and yeah once it was unplugged I just wheeled it up here wired up the electrics which is 24 volts to that unit I must note though so booths there's a sticker on the front here and it says on there that it's a 240 volt unit sorry if that was wind noise it says on there it's a 240 volt unit it isn't it's 24 volts they've put the wrong sticker on but you can see there's the 24 volt AC supply anyway managed to get it jerry rigged up and it's doing the job it's going to keep that beer from going over temperature tonight if nothing else and one of the reasons I was able to do that is because all of my brewery controllers are configured exactly the same way and we use these little uh, robust swift plugs now I don't think you can get them from screw fix or tool station anymore but when I could I bought quite a few of them so I've got a couple knocking about if you can't any four pin connector will do the job and if I've got the inside of it here I'll show you how I wire it up so what we usually do is you'll see the little letters uh, it's very difficult to see them there we go so we've got our neutral and earth in the middle and live s so that would usually be switched live on a lighting circuit but for my uh, setup i use that as live supply because lp fits in perfectly with live pump so when i hook it up this sends power out of this unit to all of my control boxes on the fermenters that are connected in a daisy chain to that particular chiller. So if I had one big giant 10,000 litre fermenter, I could run it all just off one box and one of those mobile chillers. But if I've got three smaller ones, only 500 litres, and I know that mobile chiller is big enough, that remote chiller should I say, it's big enough to do a 2,000 litre tank, so it can do three 500 litre ones easy because they're not all going to be calling for cold at the same time so I daisy chain them together and you'll notice that here they all have those exact same plugs and that's what links them and you can tell that these three are linked because it's saying that the cooling pump is on so they're all saying the cooling pump is on but most importantly this white light indicates that the valve to let the cooling glycol into the chiller um, jacket is open on this tank it's not open on those tanks so even though it's telling us the pumps on because they share a pump they all have their own control valve and also one thing I can notice is this has a little bit of a relay hum maybe I can knock it out of it there we go I knew it so that tells me I need to get in there and have a look if I've got to change out that relay so the relays that I use in those control boxes and there is a video on my channel about how to build these if you want to I think it's called brewery temperature controller or something like that I use these little fellas Let's zoom in a little bit so that's the code for them on the side this is a knockoff uh, there we go, Omeron LY2NJ. So it's a double pole, double throw, 240 volt, 10 amp relay. I cut out the little LED and resistor in there, the indicator that tells you it's on because the resistors generally aren't rated properly and the LEDs and resistor get really hot. So we just cut them out. And uh, they're all right for switching... Um, relatively small loads like maybe a 100 watt pump or something like that I wouldn't use them really to switch an element on a brewery or whatever you know it's all right for small stuff anything bigger I might go for a solid state relay or a contactor so over here for instance in the control panel that I built for the cask wash if the light's gonna be good enough, 
you'll see up in the top there, we have a British general, is that right? Contactor, and that fella, he switches the power for all of this, and it's on a fail safe, it's on an interlock. So if I uh, knock the power off, or I accidentally leave a pump on, and I turn the power on, well, it's off up here actually. It won't turn on, it won't turn any of the pumps on because you've got to push this interlock to get it to work. So you can see the pumps would, all three of those pumps would be on now if I didn't build that, that safety feature into the cask wash. Anyway, so that's what I use in the brewery control boxes and what I like about those brewery control boxes is they're interchangeable and that really has paid off today because we had a breakdown in the brewery and I've been able to swap it out and replace it in just a couple of hours. In fact, less than two hours I've done this. So there we go. I think that's going to conclude today's vlog. I'm quite happy that I've got this working again but in the morning I am going to relocate all of this equipment and probably pull out the old unit decommission it drain down the glycol because I can use that again and tidy the whole area up and we'll probably put that hydrocarbon cooler in there permanently because I'm not going to need it throughout the winter to run the cold rooms because they are going to be in fact probably warm rooms as we move into the colder weather later on in the year and that will give me enough time to order another cooler from Booth um, whatever they're called Booth, Booth's Limited I can't remember the name of them and I know when I ordered that was there was a six week lead time on them so we've got a good six months before the hot weather comes back so that will keep us going until then so that's it folks thank you for watching uh, keep liking the videos keep subscribing um, and I did notice on the analytics the other day that very few people have the bell icon notification activated for my channel so if you want to keep up to date with the new releases of the videos you just have to turn that on so you get notified when when I upload a video I guess so we will see you on the next one if you do that. Cheers.